So, hello and welcome to Solid Tip. Uh, this video will be in English and uh, because uh, I have received some in inquiries also from uh, the States, from England, from all the English sp uh, speaking countries. And the latest one is from Australia, from Colin. Colin, hi. Uh, you uh, asked if it's possible to repair a rod from you, which you have in Australia. And I didn't know that time that uh, you are from Australia, actually after the second or third email which we uh, changed, uh, we came uh, out that it doesn't make any sense to send a broken rod to Germany to repair it, but uh, we'll make a, a, a project together and thank you for the first video which, I said, which you sent me already, I will bring it uh, in the next sequence. Hello Theo, I am Colin Millwood and I live in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Last week I broke my old RL Winston light 6 weight 9 foot 2700 5 piece fly rod while I was casting at a local lake north of Brisbane. The break is just above the spigot joint and the third on the third middle piece. I'll just show you that now. I'll just put it in front of me and hold the spigots together. A little back to front there. Now, there we go. Hope that you can see that. And um, this is the actual spigot and the piece that's broken. I hope that's clear enough. This is the rest of the rod. Another three pieces. It's quite a nice old rod and I like using it. It's quite soft. I'm not sure what happened then. I think I may have lost a piece. Um, I contacted um, Winston in um, Montana and they um, by email and they sent, they just have a standard warranty card or page that you send to them and they mentioned it was $75 administration, $150 warranty and it was $50 uh, approximately for postage each way, so that was $100 all up. The total amount was about $325 approximately US, which is about mm, 460 Australian and about $280, uh, 280 Euro, which um, I just really can't justify because I'm retired and um, I don't think my wife would appreciate if I spent that amount of money just for one piece. Um, and so I started surfing the web and I spotted your site, um, Solid Tip, and um, you had some videos and one in particular that I liked and, it, and luckily it was in English because my German's very ordinary. Um, so I decided to um, email you direct to see if there's some way I could repair mine because with the COVID it's very difficult to send things to you, etc. So after a few emails you suggested that um, I provide an introduction. Now I'm struggling with this because I've never used the video before. In any case, um, this is what I'm doing and I hope I've now provided you enough information. So I'll just click it across to you now and um, hope that you can provide a tutorial that others as well as I can understand and appreciate and hopefully um, I'll be able to get the parts etc and, and repair my rod. Well that remains to be seen but hopefully you can help. Thanks a lot Theo. Bye for now. So, and I have seen everything from the other side of the world. Uh, thank you Colin for the uh, small introduction. Uh, actually I have here the same rod now, not the same rod, the different rod, but it's broken in the same section as yours, which you, which you told me, the B part, so the second part of the top, and here very close to the connection to the next part. Uh, this is uh, not uh, very seldom that rods break in this part, so maybe this video will uh, help also other fly fishermen to repair their rods by themselves, and I will show you a step by step how you can fix that broken part. 
Okay, and now I want to make my introduction. First, I want to start with my cameraman, uh, actually my son-in-law, uh, Michael. Show yourself. <laughs> How's it? <laughs> okay, and now I, I show you uh, what actually you will need to repair a rod like a broken rod like that, and what you need and why you need that. So the first thing which, which you need is just a, a part of an old, old rod or a blank part. One to strengthen this uh, blank part. I'll show you later for what you need that. And you need actually the broken parts plus carbon fiber roving. That is what the uh, material which you need. That is not too much. Altogether maybe maybe two, three euros or dollars or whatever you count it. And uh, I show you also now uh, the tools which you need. And let's begin with the material with the, with the material which you need. As sandpaper, a rough sandpaper with a 40 grain. Uh, you also need uh, we call it brand spiritus, which is nothing else in 98% alcohol, uh, not to drink but <laughs> to work with to clean. Then uh, paper to clean. Well, it's a normal kitchen paper and you also need a, 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 um, a resin, a epoxy resin, which I normally put the A and the B in uh, these injections. Uh, okay, that is that. Then to mix the epoxy, I normally use an old uh, CD with an aluminium uh, foil on it and a, a rod tip <laughs> which I actually have enough from and I can mix it on this uh, paper or on this aluminium foil once it is full I just can throw it away so that is on to, uh, uh, for the material everything you need and you need now a few tools which I also show you that's a hand uh, drill or whatever. Yeah, dremel. A dremel, yeah, a proxim dremel for example. That is what you need. And uh, if you have one then you are lucky. I can show you also uh, what you can use uh, if you don't have a rod bench like that with a pedal uh, yeah. where you can put it with the power on. Um, well. The end, yes, in the other where we start now working, I show you the last machine where we started, so they start working. Okay, we changed roles now and my cameraman uh, is now the speaker and I will explain to you how this Solicone Connect technique actually uh, uh, works. Well, there we go, Solicone. It's basically self-explanatory. Instead of making a connection with a, a piece inside there and putting it together, which creates a tension spot that's gonna kind of break after a while and start cracking, you make your one side of your blank tapered, and you make a taper on the inside of that, and then you connect them together. Just anyway, I can yeah. explain it. And then this uh, distributes the, t the, the tension spot. Yeah. So that it doesn't crack at the And that also way. explains the, the name of this, of this game, uh, Soli Cone Connect yep. technique, because Soli Tip simply found it out that it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's go to work. Uh, okay, uh, and now I show you the last machine or last tool or the machine which you need. That is actually a grinder. Here it is. Alright. And. Now let's uh, make the first step. On the side which is uh, uh, directed to the tip, all this, which, which gets thinner, you make the first cone. Therefore, you can take, I will grind here simply, hold that and turn it here. Just to, to create that cone on the end of the not too much at once and always turn direction where you in which you turn is regardless so okay 
Oh, that's kind of focus. All right. Okay, that was the first step already. So that was the first step that was, I think, very simple. And now we have to create the same uh, cone inside here just to put those two parts together. Therefore we use the Dremel and uh, it is very important that the part which you want to, uh, to make the cone in, that it turns so the cone will be straight. Also very, very, very soft. No, not too much tension. It, that takes quite a time. But if the rod remains broken, it will remain broken forever. So you have time enough. Okay, let's see if this works already. Not enough yet. Uh. You see that? It has to go in uh, so, so far that we... All the way to all the, the way in the there. Mm -hmm. You need the gimbal one? No. Okay, thank you. If that wobbles too much, then you can... Okay. Okay, let's try again. Much better already. Let's go ahead. Yes, that looks good. A tight fit. Mm-hmm. Tight fit. Yes. Now comes the third part. And in the third part we will use the rod which will centrate or how you call it uh, as a center part uh, for the rod connection I show you also that we need the other tool over there and for which I will show to you okay. first is we try it how deep that goes in here that is much too long so we shorten it a little bit just using the same tool that is how I do it. And if you do work like that, then keep your nose always away from the tool or wear a mask. Okay, that looks much better. Two to three centimeters is, is really enough. On the other side, we, we don't have too much uh, space inside here anyway because there comes the ferrule in from the next part and we can use as well only those, those three centimeters for it for at the most so we cut it in the same way oh 
Okay. As this has a cone, uh, it probably will not fit in here. And we have to, to grind it a little bit. This we can do by hand. So if you don't have a laugh like that. But, <laughs> but there's not too much which you have to grind off. This should work already. What goes in here? Should go in here. Yeah, it goes in here. Almost, almost, almost. A little bit more. I use a 40 grain grit. Grit. Okay. Grit. Grit. Okay. 40 grit. <laughs> It looks already almost perfect, I think. But it's not uh, the end of the video yet. Uh, the, where, where this rod broke, that is also, uh, also a sign that is much uh, power, especially in this part. So if we use a thinner part, a thinner part than the, uh, the rod which we repair with it, it will be a weaker part. So we will strengthen it just by gluing in one more piece. That is like that. So it, it, the wall thickness is much bigger and it will uh, hold better in the cast. One more part, I show you now something, the self-lock system uh, for the for the for gluing in then just make it close up what I do is I grind at the end simply something like a winding yeah and the same spiral. a spiral and the same thing on the other side and why do it it's very simple we glue it with epoxy can you see it? Yeah, you need to go a bit slow. Huh? Okay, cool. Okay. When we glue it with the epoxy, uh, then it runs in here and will be, will, will, will be kept inside there. And when it hardens, it cannot go out in the, in the other direction anymore. So that means it cannot happen like so many other repairs happen that this part simply slips out of the uh, repair section. And the same, the same thing with the other side. So it's basically so the glue gets all the way into the blank. Yes. The and, and, oh. Yeah, and 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 it and it and the and the sticks to the, the walls. Sticks to the walls. Yeah. And once it uh, 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 when it cures, it will be hard. And especially on uh, this side, the inside diameter gets a little bit thi uh, uh, thicker in the in, in that direction. So it is locked and cannot go out anymore. And on the other side, okay, uh, well, the glue has to glue anyway. Yeah. But uh, at least this part here is double secured. Yeah. Well, the end will be cut off before gluing it in, certainly. Uh, now I have to glue that here in, then cut the ends off and then use the strengthened piece to connect the two broken parts together. And now in the next part of the video I show you how to uh, finish this uh, repair by using the glue, by using the carbon fiber roving and how to do a finish that really looks, looks good. And then if the rod, when the rod is ready, we'll also show you outside that it's still that it casts. Okay. Just one sec.